Hi, my name is Ryan Floyd. I'm here with another video in my video blog series about the advice I might give you if I was an investor in your business as a venture investor or just an advisor. In the last video, I talked about churn. This video, we're gonna talk about how to fix your churn and, uh, and talk about some specific techniques and how to really go about thinking about it. I mean, you work so hard to gain all these customers. What we talked about in the last video was if you're targeting the enterprise uh, uh, customer set, you kind of want to get to like a 10% churn, ideally, uh, in terms of gross. Less is better. 10% is maybe a good benchmark to target. How do you do that? How do you think about getting there? So let's get into that a little bit about uh, how to approach that. So how to fix your churn problem? Well, first, let's start with a couple of assumptions. Let's start with your product works. Look, if your product doesn't work and you're selling something that you really can't deliver on, uh, I, this isn't the right video. There's something else that we should talk about there in terms of your sales process and how to think about that. But here, we're gonna assume that your product works basically as advertised and you're selling that value proposition into the customers. So we're gonna take that for granted. I mean, look, back in the 80s and 90s when uh, enterprise software, before it moved to the cloud, before SaaS, I mean, it was all about you know, shock and awe sales strategies, come in, love them and leave them, sell as much as you can up front and then boom, out the door. Today, it's much more about value because SaaS cuts both ways. Customers can churn. They subscribe, they expect value, and if they don't get it, they're often going to leave. You know, 20 years ago, in enterprise software's defense, it was much harder to deliver on that because often there's a lot of variables outside of people's control, how you set up data centers, you had to use consultants to configure the software, all these sorts of things made it much harder to deliver value. But today, often there's very few excuses for you as a SaaS vendor to not be delivering value. So let's really start with that as the first point, delivering value. You can think about getting dollars from your customer is the ultimate goal. And obviously you're trying to build a business, but I would tell you with respect to churn and really building the business, think about value. Think about your customers, are they getting value? Because if you come at it from this point of view, I contend the dollars will flow. And it's certainly the organizational alignment that you want. Rather than having your sales folks and customer success people and engineers and everybody thinking about trying to get that next dollar, rather think about the, you know, how do I deliver more value to my customers? How do I make my customers successful with the product that I'm building? That's really the foundation that you start from in really thinking about your churn problem. So now let's get into maybe a couple of areas to specifically dig into. So we talked about sales and marketing very early in the process. It's important to, to figure out who that ideal customer profile is and make sure you're targeting the right folks because if you're not solving their problem, they're going to churn. Onboarding is the second most important area to talk about. Onboarding is really the process of taking whatever it is that you sold and making sure that it's successful inside the customer. Now, most people might think, geez, I worked with this person um, at the customer, they decided to buy it. So what gives? They, you know, they've decided to buy it and now they can go on using the product. I'm here to tell you you're gonna be incredibly <laughs> disappointed to find, especially in large, large organizations, that it just, it's not that simple. And often, you know, it might be because the person who's making the decision to buy is not the totality of the user group. It may be because um, the, the, the person who decided to buy doesn't have the capability to maybe implement some things that they need to do in the product themselves. There are just a ton of, ton of reasons. The, the important takeaway is that it's your job as the vendor, as the SaaS vendor, to make sure that that customer is successful in the onboarding process. It's the number one reason I would tell you, looking back over our portfolio, the number one reason that customers churn is because they're not successfully onboarded in those first 90 days. People expect a very quick time to value a SaaS. I mean, again, it's one of the beautiful things about SaaS. I can buy something, I can implement, I can get value out of it. I don't need to wait a year and hire consultants and spend a ton of money to get value. I can get value very quickly. But the flip side of that is you need to deliver value very quickly because if you can't, 
it gets harder and harder over time. If like you walk into a customer after six months after they've bought it, and now you're trying to really get them up and running on the product, it's just hard because, well, A, they've you know already disappointed that they've made this decision six months ago and nothing has happened and they're not getting value out of it. But also they've probably moved on to something else. I mean, everybody has a job to do and they had allocated time to making an investment in you and your company. And now six months later, they've probably got a whole nother set of uh, things that they're focused on. And um, it may be harder to get back in front of them. So really focusing on that onboarding early on, making sure that you've met what the customer expectations are, it's by far the most critical thing you can do. And most organizations have a customer success function, a group of people that are responsible for interacting with that customer and making sure that they're happy and they're getting value. It's important that those individuals understand the product can look at what the usage is, can really ask the right questions, and it's not a checkbox, it's not just an email, it's something where they really understand, going back to that concept of value after that onboarding process. Okay, so we've talked about onboarding, we've talked about early in the sales process and the foundation being value. You know I love metrics, so <laughs> that's no different in churn, you gotta measure. And it's amazing today what you can measure in your process and in your product to really help you instrument this whole customer success pro uh, process. There's a ton of products out there that allow you to look at who's logging in, what features they're using, how, how frequently they're using certain features, and it will tell you a lot in terms of whether or not they're getting value out of the product. And you'll begin to see um, patterns in customers, patterns in happy customers, patterns in customers that have churned. And all of a sudden then you have very clear markers that the team can act on early. It's like an early warning system to actually get in there and work with the customer. Because it may be hard to know, like, you know, they tell me they're happy and, you know, customers, people are interesting. People generally want to tell you what you want to hear. It's human nature. I mean, who wants to, who, who, who wants to tell you like, you know, bad news and, you know, general, people are going to tell you what you want to hear usually. So when you measure things and you actually look at what people are doing with your product, it'll tell you a tremendous amount about whether or not you're on the right path and usually an early, early warning about whether or not that customer is going to churn. Okay. So the next thing to focus on is people. Look, champions are going to churn, but your product shouldn't. What I mean by that is, look, when you go in initially, you're probably selling to an individual who's super excited about what it is that you're selling to them because you're solving their pain point. That's why they're your advocate, they're your champion. Over time though, you need to make sure that not only do you make that person a superhero, but you make others in the organization heroes as well. You need to expand what that value proposition is to more individuals inside of the customer. Because if you don't, you're at this risk when that champion leaves, you know, people are not gonna even know necessarily what it is that your product does, and you'll be at really high risk of churn. It's probably after onboarding, it's probably the second most likely reason that customers churn. Now this is tricky because sometimes champions don't necessarily wanna have you come in and talk more broadly to others. Sometimes salespeople look at this as a massive sales opportunity. And again, we're gonna go back to what I said at the very beginning. Look at it as delivering value. Talk to your champion in the context of how can you make him or her more successful in the organization with your product. You come in with ideas about how to do that, attract a broader audience, and talk about your, your product in the context of their broader set of problems internally and how you're delivering value. That way, you're building broader engagement and a broader audience for your product, and you'll be much less risk of churn over the long term. All right, number five, surprises. <laughs> Look, leave surprises for birthday parties. You should know whether or not your customer is going to churn. You should not be calling them up 30 days before the renewal, 90 days before the renewal, and not really know what direction that customer is gonna go in. Best practice in the portfolio 
most know that churn is going to happen very early, six months. If it's an annual contract, six months, sometimes even earlier, but usually around the six month mark. At the very least, six months gives you the chance to maybe, maybe do a diving catch, have more executive attention, do maybe a special feature with the product, think about more value into that customer. But I guarantee if you're walking in 30 days asking for a check, there's no diving catch. It's, 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 it's likely gone. You should try, but it's certainly not the way that you want to think about churn. And, and, when, uh, uh, and when you're fixing it, you really want to remove all those surprises, ideally from the process, and really focus on uh, shifting it earlier. All right, so the last one is growth. So this one... Um, maybe me a little bit uh, nuanced, but if your customers are not growing in general, they're likely to churn. One of the magical things about SaaS that I've talked about before is how it compounds. You really want to think about how you can continue to deliver more value into that customer. If you walk in and you sell them a product and there's nothing else to sell to them and they don't grow and they don't expand, you're really not continuing to build value inside of that customer. Now you might say, hey Ryan, I don't have another product to sell. I'm too busy doing this, getting a new customer. I get it, it's hard. It's a lot of things going on at the same time. And all this is kind of like, you know, you try to do it incrementally. You can't do all these things at once. But ideally you really should have multiple products and multiple value propositions, a way to expand, a way to grow that relationship over time. Because the hardest thing you've already done is getting in the door. You've already gotten the door to that customer, you have an advocate, you understand their business and now build on that. It's a beautiful thing thinking about how you can deliver more value into that existing customer and what that translates into, into growth. So you can actually look at growth as a metric to watch closely, you know, existing account growth, expansion, because if it's not happening, I would tell you you're at risk of having a churn problem as well. All right, so I hope you like this video uh, in terms of how to think about fixing churn. Obviously, there's a lot that goes into fixing churn. There's never a simple answer, just one thing, do this or do that. It's a process of looking at overall what's happening in your customer base and really going back to that foundational concept of delivering value. I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave me comments down below. Leave me ideas of what else you'd like to hear about. I look forward to the next video with you. Until then, good luck and talk to you then.